Positive economic news coming out of West Memphis, Arkansas, where Coca-Cola Consolidated announced a $25 million expansion at its production facility. From a guarded secret recipe to high-speed bottling and global delivery, we're revealing how Coca-Cola is really made from start to fizz. Before we dive in, quick question. Are you Team Classic Coke or Diet Coke? Drop your answer in the comments. The origin of Coca-Cola. A drink born in a pharmacy, Coca-Cola's story begins not in a factory, but in a pharmacy. Back in 1886, a pharmacist named John Stith Pemberton was working on a remedy for headaches and fatigue. What he created was a dark, fizzy syrup that he first sold in a jug at Jacob's Pharmacy in Atlanta. They mixed it with carbonated water and called it Coca-Cola. The name came from two of the drink's original ingredients, coca leaves and cola nuts. But the real secret was how the formula made people feel. It wasn't just a medicine, it tasted good. Sales started slow. That first year, they sold just nine glasses a day. But everything changed when a businessman named Asa Candler bought the formula just two years later for $2,300. He had one goal, make Coca-Cola a household name. And he did. The Coca-Cola company didn't just sell a drink, one historian said, it sold a feeling. Candler invested heavily in advertising painted walls with the Coke logo, and got bottles into the hands of thousands. By the early 1900s, Coca-Cola was no longer just a Southern tonic. It was a national obsession. Stands and values service, not to, just to their customers and guests, but to the entire region and country that they serve. And when World War II hit, Coca-Cola followed the soldiers. The company even built portable bottling plants on the front lines, so American troops could enjoy a Coke and a smile wherever they were. From pharmacy remedy to wartime morale booster, Coca-Cola had gone global. But its success didn't just come from marketing. It came from something much harder to replicate. The recipe. Let's talk about that. The secret formula. America's most guarded trade secret. If you think the recipe for Coca-Cola is written down in some old cookbook, think again. The exact formula is one of the most closely guarded secrets in the world. Right now, the original recipe is locked inside a vault at the World of Coca-Cola Museum in Atlanta. Visitors can see the vault, but not what's inside. And only two people in the entire company are said to know the full formula. Their identities? Also a secret. If something is worth guarding, it's worth keeping mysterious, one Coca-Cola executive once said. But wait, don't the ingredients show up on every can or bottle? They do. Kind of. What's really hidden is one line on the label natural flavors. That's where the secret lives. It's a blend of botanical extracts and oils, possibly from spices, fruit, and roots, that give Coke its signature taste. This formula is now turned into something called beverage concentrate, a super strong syrup that gets diluted later. Where is this syrup made? Also undisclosed. While most soft drinks are easy to copy, Coca-Cola's exact flavor has never been replicated. That's how powerful the secret is. But Coke isn't just syrup, it's mostly water. And for Coca-Cola, that water has to be perfect. Let's see how they turn ordinary water into something worthy of the world's most famous drink, water. The foundation of every bottle. Believe it or not, about 90% of every bottle of Coca-Cola is just water. But this isn't regular tap water. It's specially treated, ultra-pure water. And the entire drink depends on it. Each Coca-Cola plant has its own on-site water treatment system. Water is pulled from either deep underground wells or municipal sources, depending on the location. But wherever it comes from, it goes through a strict multi-stage purification process. First, it passes through sand and carbon filters to remove visible particles, chlorine, and other chemicals. Then it goes through nanofiltration, a type of superfine filter that blocks even microscopic contaminants. Finally, it's treated with UV light to kill any remaining bacteria or viruses. Water is the blank canvas of Coca-Cola, a plant technician once said. If the water's not perfect, nothing else will be. After purification, the water is stored in stainless steel tanks, sealed and pressurized, to keep it fresh and uncontaminated. This ultra-clean water becomes the base for everything that follows. And now that the water is ready, it's time to add the heart of the drink, the famous Coca-Cola syrup. Let's take a look at how the flavor we all know comes to life. Syrup mixing. 
where the magic begins. Now comes the moment where Coca-Cola starts to taste like Coca-Cola. That purified water is pumped into massive mixing units, where it's combined with the beverage concentrate, also known as Coca-Cola's secret syrup. The concentrate doesn't look like much on its own. It arrives in sealed plastic drums, usually by forklift, and is stored under tight conditions. This concentrate is what carries the signature flavor, the part that makes Coke taste like Coke. It's powerful, so only a small amount is needed. Workers mix it into the water using precise ratios, controlled by automated systems. But flavor isn't the only thing being added. This is where sweeteners come in. High fructose corn syrup is used in regular Coke in the US aspartame is added for diet Coke. Acesulfame potassium, or stevia, may be used in Coke Zero and other variants. Each product has its own formula, and the mixing process must be exact every time. It's like baking a cake on a global scale, said a Coca-Cola engineer. The recipe never changes. The mixed syrup and sweeteners form a stable liquid base. From here, the drink travels through stainless steel pipelines into batch tanks, where it's temporarily stored. These tanks are in a sealed room to avoid any contamination. So far, the drink is sweet, but flat. Next stop, adding the bubbles that give it life. Carbonation, the fizz factor. What's a Coke without that pssst when you pop it open? This is the step where Coca-Cola meets carbonation, the ingredient that gives it those fizzy dancing bubbles. The sweetened syrup mixture is chilled to a very specific temperature, between 41 to 43 degrees Fahrenheit, 5 to 6 degrees Celsius. Cooling it this much helps the carbon dioxide absorb more efficiently. From there, the mixture heads into a machine called the carbonator, or more precisely, the votator. This machine injects carbon dioxide gas, CO2, into the liquid under high pressure, making the drink fizzy and bubbly. If the pressure or temperature is even a little off, the bubbles won't hold, and the drink could end up flat. The carbonation is what brings it to life, one technician explained. You hear it, you feel it, you even taste it. The CO2 used in Coca-Cola is food-grade, purified, and carefully monitored to make sure it stays stable. The gas doesn't just create bubbles, it also slightly affects the taste. That sharp bite on your tongue? That's the CO2 working its magic. Once carbonated, the drink flows straight into buffer tanks and is kept under pressure to preserve the fizz. At this point, the drink is fully mixed, perfectly balanced, and ready to be bottled or canned. And that's where the real show begins. Mass bottling at high speed, with robots, rinsers, and rows of containers flying past in perfect timing. Let's head over to the bottling line next and see how the world's most famous drink is poured, sealed, and labeled in a flash. Bottling. Precision meets speed, approximately 600 words. Once the Coca-Cola mixture is fully carbonated, it's finally ready to be bottled. But this isn't some slow, one-at-a-time process. Bottling Coca-Cola is a high-speed, high-precision operation that runs like a choreographed dance. It all starts with the bottles themselves. Whether plastic or glass, they arrive at the plant empty but not yet ready to use. Even though they're fresh from manufacturing, each one must be thoroughly cleaned to ensure no dust or particles affect the final drink. The bottles are placed on a conveyor where a rinsing machine flips them upside down, sprays them with filtered water or sterilizing air, and then flips them upright again. Only then are they ready for filling. But before the liquid goes in, the bottles are labeled. This might seem early, but applying labels first ensures they stick properly and line up perfectly with the brand's red and white identity. Now comes the filling. Bottles pass under a row of nozzles that dispense just the right amount of fizzy Coke. Everything is pressure controlled to avoid foaming or spilling. At this stage, air is removed to help preserve the carbonation. The fill has to be exact, one operator shared. Even being off by a few milliliters isn't okay. We're dealing with millions of bottles a day. After filling, the bottles head straight to the capping machine. Caps come down a chute, launched by compressed air, and are sealed onto each bottle in a split second. For glass bottles, a metal crown cap is crimped in place. For plastic bottles, twist caps are screwed on tightly. Next, the freshly sealed bottles are warmed slightly to room temperature to prevent condensation. Then, they're sent for one last check before moving to packaging. But not all Coke comes in bottles. Some of it ends up in cans, 
the sleek, compact containers we see in vending machines, parties, and road trips. Let's see how those are made. Canning, the compact companion. While bottling looks impressive, the canning line is all about efficiency and speed. Cans are lighter, easier to transport, and faster to fill, making them a popular choice around the world. The process begins with aluminum cans arriving at the factory in massive stacks. These cans are already shaped but completely open at the top and, of course, empty. Just like the bottles, each one is sent through a cleaning system, rinsed and dried to remove dust or debris. Once cleaned, they roll into the filling line. Here, rows of nozzles lower into the cans and fill them with that same Coca-Cola blend. Syrup, water, sweeteners, and bubbles kept chilled and carbonated until the very last moment. It's like filling thousands of tiny tanks at once, one technician said, and every drop counts. After filling, it's time to seal the deal. A machine called a can seamer places a lid on each can and rolls the edges to create a perfect seal. This ensures no gas escapes and the drink stays fresh and fizzy. Next, cans are washed and dried again to remove any sticky residue from the filling line. They're passed through quality scanners that use cameras and sensors to check every seam, every fill line, and every label. Once they're good to go, the cans are grouped, stacked, and prepped for packaging, alongside their bottled cousins. And now that the drinks are filled, sealed, and inspected, it's time to wrap them up and get them ready for the road, ready for the world. When Coca-Cola is packaged, it's not just about looking good, it's about safety, strength, and storage. Bottles and cans are grouped into various bundles depending on the market. Some go in six packs, some in trays, and some in cardboard wraps. The packaging is chosen to minimize movement and protect the product from damage. Each bundle is then shrink-wrapped in plastic or secured with recyclable clips, creating a tight seal around the group. This also makes it easier to lift, stack, and transport. Robotic arms take over from here. These machines stack cans and bottles into large blocks, precisely balanced on wooden or plastic pallets. Every move is calculated to maximize space. We're not just shipping soda said a logistics manager. We're shipping a brand. It has to arrive looking perfect. Once stacked, the pallets are again wrapped, this time in industrial strength plastic, to keep everything stable during transportation. From here, the pallets are loaded onto trucks and sent to distribution centers. Some will go straight to supermarkets, gas stations, and vending machines. Others will be stored and routed based on demand. But before any of that, there's one last step that's absolutely critical, making sure the product is flawless. Let's talk about Coca-Cola's commitment to quality control. Every sip must be perfect. With billions of bottles and cans sold each year, Coca-Cola has one promise to keep. Every sip must taste exactly the same. That kind of consistency doesn't happen by chance. It comes from extreme attention to detail and constant testing. First, each production line is equipped with high-speed scanners. These machines use cameras, lasers, and sensors to check things like fill levels, cap tightness, label placement, can seams, bottle pressure. If anything is off by even a hair, the item is pulled from the line immediately. Next, samples from every batch are sent to an in-house lab where technicians test for taste, carbonation, sugar content, and even smell. They run chemical tests to confirm the exact makeup of each drink matches the Coca-Cola standard. Our job is to catch the things no one else ever sees, said one lab tech. If we do it right, you'll never notice. In some plants, humans still play a key role. Trained inspectors do random checks, feeling bottles, shaking cans, and watching every detail to ensure no machine error slips through. Even after packaging, shipments are tracked and documented, so any issue can be traced back to the exact time batch, and production line. This level of quality control is what makes Coca-Cola dependable worldwide. Whether it's a bottle from Brazil or a can from Canada, you know what you're going to get. But as impressive as this system is, Coca-Cola knows it can't just keep things the same forever. The world is changing, and so is Coke. Let's look at how the company is preparing for the future. Sustainability. The future of the fizzy icon. Coca-Cola may be over 130 years old, but it's not stuck in the past. In fact, one of its biggest focuses right now is sustainability, making sure the drink we all love doesn't come at a cost to the planet. One of Coca-Cola's boldest steps has been reducing plastic waste. They've introduced plastic-free packaging solutions like the Light Pack Top, 
a cardboard clip that holds bottles or cans together without using shrink wrap. It's fully recyclable and already being used in several countries. We want every package to have a second life, says Coca-Cola's head of packaging. Recyclable, reusable, or compostable, that's the goal. The company is also investing heavily in bottle recycling programs. In many cities, Coca-Cola helps fund collection bins with bold graphics encouraging recycling. Used plastic bottles are sorted, cleaned, melted, and turned into food-grade plastic containers, ready to be used again. Give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment with your favorite Coke moment, and don't forget to subscribe for more behind-the-scenes looks at the world's most fascinating creations. Thanks for watching, and stay fizzy, friends. Frozen drink.